Good morning, Nigeria. Good morning to everybody in the diaspora. Nigeria's the diaspora, Nigeria's at home. Um, good morning. Um, welcome to St. Clair Breaking News Update, where we give you authentic news. We just don't come out and give you news that are not verified. And universities come online to give you news that are not verified. So today, I'm going to be having um, Dr. Kemi Roy live to give us more updates based on the fact that she's one of the smartest journalists we have in Nigeria. She's one of the smartest women, and um, I so much believe in her. In, uh, in fact, sometimes I wonder how she gets her information, and um, she's so accurate, you understand? So back home, Nigerians don't sleep anymore, and we ourselves, we don't sleep, so... So, um, I've not slept. I slept this afternoon. So, guys, so I'm going to be bringing Dr. Kemi over here to give us more updates on um, what is happening with him. Um, I greet everybody who will give us more updates on this topic. Where is Abakari? And, you know, so I'm going to bring in a live and direct. And again, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Nigeria. It's your boy, Seb Noni, all the way from. Texas Eastern. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Ma. How are you doing? Very good. Thank you, Sam Cliff. Um, I believe we're now around um, 5.26 a.m. I have not really slept because I've been working all night on this story. Um, as you know, I broke this story um, in June of 2020 that Hush Puppy was arrested. I also broke this story that he was taken to America. What I want from the Nigerian youth in everybody in Nigeria is to start believing in my work. I work with literally no funds and I want them to believe in what I do. I'm tired. On August 1st to 6th, I don't work online. I use it as a week to reflect on my life with God. It's what the pastors do when they're about to do crusades. They have retreats. They're in a room, the food and the drinks are at the door, and they're talking to God. Seven days. So tomorrow is August 1st, and today is really my last day of doing any work for another seven days. On the 7th of August, I come back to online. So I want to do as much today. There's a lot of posts I have to do on all my platforms. Thanks for having me, Sam Cliff. What I'm about to talk about is very serious. Very serious. Number one. I'm totally disappointed at some of the stuff that came out. Um, who am I disappointed at? Nigerian government, Nigerian police, EFCC. Who exactly? Everybody and the masses. Let me update you on this story with Abba Kiari because Mr. Kiari, BCP Kiari that I know, is just a very, very good cop when it comes about arresting criminals. He's good. Okay. Wadume, kidnapper. Hausa, kidnapper. Evans, Igbo, kidnapper. They were bad people. They shot people. They stole money. They extorted. They had kidnappers dead. All these people were bad. Mr. Kiari was in charge of that particular SARS unit and also the IRT. The IGP monitoring unit Intelligence Response Unit, he's, he's headed all of them. And there were atrocities there. If you remember in 2018, Amnesty International came up with a lot of atrocities committed. We all know there was atrocities in SARS, okay? They executed people extrajudicially. But let's go to the point. What is happening now is shocking me. The hush puppy connection. So I'm going to go from the back to the front, okay. the latest. I hope you're aware that four top FBI officials arrived here on Monday night. Today is Saturday morning. They arrived on Monday night, and on Tuesday, they lodged at their embassies. I believe they came in through Lagos. They went to the Attache office in Victoria Island, where the embassy is. That's the main embassy. Even though Abuja was picked as the federal capital, then they built another one there. 
And then they went to the other one. Mary Beth Leonard is the ambassador. Um, Claire Piangelo is the consulate general in Lagos. Now, knowing what has happened, because Lagos and Abuja are getaway zones in Nigeria. If you want to get away from Nigeria, you must use Lagos via plane or to Kutano via road. Abuja, Namdi Azikwe. So they're monitoring the movement of many people. The four FBI officials came for a lot of people. It was not just Abakiari. They came for a lot of people. Okay. Uh, Dre Essentials. Uh, the person calling me, Dr. Kem Kem, please don't call me Kem Kem on this broadcast. I don't want to do what I did on Azuka's broadcast. I will simply leave Sam Clef's Mama. broadcast. So please, please respect me. Let's just ignore okay. the comments. My blood, my, my blood, you should, call, you should close the comments, Sam Cliff. My blood pressure went up yesterday when I was talking to you, and I was very upset. I think you should close the comments. When you finish with me, we will do a question and answer session, okay? Because my mental health and the way I look at stuff, good. You know, it doesn't let people co concentrate. I'm Dr. Kem, your new lawyer, not Dr. Kem Kem or Auntie Kem Kem, okay? Respect people. Okay, I'm not getting paid to come up here. Time is money. Now, Sam Cliff, like I said, I hope you know that four top officials have landed here Monday night. They've been in a series of meetings on going to get Kiari arrested. An eradication process already filed. We don't know. The police leadership and some powerful people in the presidency, they're stopping at nothing to cover this guy. They're providing a cover and soft landing for Mr. Kiari. Mr. Kiari was on my live video on Saturday when we were killing a ram here in my street. I went live because I wanted to say happy Salah and I wanted people to see what communities are supposed to be like. I am fighting my own little war in Lagos here where I've sent a message to Governor Sonwulu that I want to meet with him and the police chief, Hakimo Jumosu on the fact that Aja and Songutero is still having problems with crime. All the guns they took from the police station in Ajiwe, and they burnt the station down. One of our officers died there. All those guns are showing up on the street at 6.30 a.m. in traffic. When the traffic starts building, you just see some boys just run to your car with machine guns, and they break your window and take your phone and your valuables. The traffic robberies here is bad. So I need Governor Sonwolu and CP Odumosu to work on that. Second thing, Ado Road in Aja, they're still stopping young people. If you have a laptop, if you have dreads, that's SARS all over again. Now, at the end of the day, okay, what they're doing right now, the community activism I do in U.S. and Canada all right, I am a known community activist. U.S. drugs, Canada guns. I'm not there anymore. I'm in Nigeria. This is my country. Anybody know? I helped a lot in the community. Women, empowerment, everything. Educating people on the streets about their medicines. I will stand in the middle of the market and I'll say, everybody come and me, tell me what medicine you're on. I'll educate them. Hmm. Now, where I'm going to is that I like Kieri because he protected the community. There's a part of Abuja where they kidnap people every day and people are moving out of that part and they recover people in Niger State. That, those big, huge rocks in Abuja, behind them is Niger State, bandits. So at the end of the day, Mr. Kiari came on my live video, not with a fake account, not with a police account. He came with his personal verified account and started discussing what I said about community. The part where I zoomed in the ram into the camera. I said, these people killing this ram, burning it, cutting it up. Tayo, what's your name? Introduce yourself. Tayo said, I'm an engineer. Abdul Rahman, I'm a journalism student. Everybody said a profession they did. They're members of the community. They were helping kill the ram. So Abakiari and I got into a deep conversation about community building and how we must trust the police again. And people love the broadcast. I still have the broadcast. If you go to the broadcast of my page for Salad Day, you will probably not see Kiari's comments again. It'll say that he has de deactivated his account, but I have the video so you can see it on the video. Mr. Kiari 
coming out now and me hearing all this stuff about Mr. Kiari, I'm shocked. You matter what you do that's good, one single thing can mess it all up. It's called, it's okay. called small sheets, they stay in ash. So I now said, the police leadership and some powerful people in the presidency are stopping at nothing to provide a cover and soft landing for this cop, this suspect cop. Okay, we cannot say Mr. Kiari is guilty, yet we have to call him suspect. They are on his payroll. Is he remitting returns to them? Is he, are they on his payroll? How much money does Kiari have? How much money does Kiari have to remit to the powerful people in the government? How much money? 1.1 million naira, okay? 1.1 million dollars is the Qatari businessman scam. Okay, so how much is in there that you can give Kiari that he'll be remitting it to them? It can't be that much. What is the FBI looking for? They're looking for, they're basically looking for the money. Everybody that was scammed won their, their money sorry, back. Sorry, I think, that, I think they're also looking, there's a bigger picture we're not looking at because mm -hmm. about Kiari is not just the only person you're looking out for. It's yeah, just, I told you they're here for a lot of people. They're, lot for, they're, they're here for a lot of people. They just, it's just like, you know, it, he, he, the, I, I'm not going to put it, though. He it didn't, it didn't play smart, you understand? So this case is a very powerful case. Like, this case is going to open to the world of how our security is like, like how, how corrupt the system is. I understand the fact that Abakari, although he has served the country, he has done well. Everybody's greedy, you understand? But to be honest, yeah. I'm, coming, I'm coming to be honest, I feel like a lot of people, a lot of evil things have gone down too. Yeah. Just like when mm -hmm. I read about the woman that they took all her property. I used to tell people about karma. Karma comes mm -hmm. No matter how good mm -hmm. you are, if you've done something bad before, like I said, mm -hmm. those small sheets will stay in your yash. So now let, me, now let me continue. So one of the things I want to know as an investigative journalist is, who are these powerful people in the presidency? Is how much is he remitting to them? Are they sharing all this money? So I called CP Frank Mba, the spokesman to the police department. Mr. Mba actually picked up my call. Oh, hi, doctor. How are you? Yesterday, Mr. Mba, I want to talk to you, please. You're the police spokesman. A journalist, of course, has a right to call the spokesman for a question. You know what I mean? If he doesn't talk to me, then I will write as a journalist. I spoke to Frank Mba. He had no comment. I called him because I wanted to know where Mr. Kiari was. Okay. You remember I said I have sources everywhere. People are abusing me over there on Facebook. Saying, you know, Kemi knows everybody. She's bragging. She's, shut up. I'm an investigative journalist. Shut the hell up. If you're, a journalist, if you're a journalist, that's one thing. TVC, Arise, AIT. But when you're investigative, you got to know them in the inside. How did I break the story that they've arrested Naira Mali? How? I have boys inside the EFCC. How did I tell you Namdi Kanu is inside Nigeria? Because I have boys at the DSS. Those boys are the people that call me and speak out without an official and say, Auntie Kemi, am I Daru Komio? Auntie Kemi, don't, answer, don't say my name. Oh. FBI boys. Secret Service. Hey, Kemi, we watched your interview last night on this Arise channel. You did great. Continue doing the job. We'll keep giving you info. Just don't tag us. You can tag the FBI. Don't tag us or tag our personal pages or mention our names. Because even the bosses at the FBI must not know they're talking to me. This is the joy of being an investigative journalist. Respect that work. I have no money to do this work. I'm using my money, my time, my energy. I'm old now. I'm going to be 57 in six days. I'm resting now. I'm tired of all these lies. LCF. Stamp that into your head, um, um, Sam Cliff. LCF. I like acronyms. Okay, like YOLO. Drake did that one. You only live once. NIMBY. Americans did that one. Not in my backyard. If they say which, they've which kidnapped... Is, which one is Nigerian owned now? Give us Nigerian Niger owned. Nigerian owned that I formed. S-B-N-I. What does that S-B-N-I. Smart but not intelligent. Jeez. Everybody. <laughs> smart but not intelligent. Smart but not intelligent. And then this new one that I did is LCF. Hush Puppy was an LCF. Liar, cheat, and fraud. There's so many LCFs in Nigeria. Let me tell you something. One officer called me from that IRT, Intelligence Response Unit, 
Auntie Kemi, don't mention my name. He said to me, Kiari and Kolo, you know Kolo, DC Kolo, STS, they are untouchables for a number of reasons. Okay? Kiari and Kolo, STS, I don't know if they're here for Kolo too. K O L O. This Kolo, we don't know if they're here for him, but they are untouchables for a very number of reasons. Our uh, officer tell me now, what's the reason? Karen? He said to me that it would be very tough to yield them to the FBI. Arrangements are underway to make him go underground to evade arrest. This is where I have a problem. Let me ask you a question now. Hold on, Mama. Let me ask you a question, Dr. Al. What's up with EFCC? Why is EFCC not? Because this case has to do with for FBI to be in Nigeria. Normally, he's supposed to be between EFCC and FBI. We're getting, we're getting to that, Sam Clear. That's where I'm going now. Okay. okay. Nice. My source, the police, you know, intelligence response said. Let me tell you something about the IRT. Let me see. The intelligence response unit, Sam Clef. Sam Clef, my dear King, but if I'm doing this, okay, if I'm closing my eyes, bear with me. I've not slept. That's why I'm like that. And when I go to sleep, I want to shower. That way my body can be light and I can, you know, so if I'm doing this, I'm still awake. Let me say this to you, mm -hmm. okay, EFCC. Let me say, when my, my insider cop, Okay, you see the intelli intelligence response unit of Nigerian police is actually one of the best in the world, believe it or not. If I tell you some of the cases those guys have done, that's another show. The way they solve some murders, the murder of that professor at University of Portacourt, how the houseboy and the cook buried him in the soccer way and took all his belongings, all that stuff was IRT. The intelligence is very good, no doubt. Now, my source told me it is going to be very tough to yield Kiari to the feds in the FBI because they're making arrangements mm. to go, make him go underground to evade arrest. He's already gone underground. Yari's pages are offline. Yari has three verified pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. They're gone. You can't see them. The last time anyone saw Kiari was at Obi Kubana's birthday, um, mommy's burial. So now that also puts Obi on in the light because Obi didn't write anything about Kiari. Obi was too busy to be writing sto stories about anything. He just captioned his post with his mother's funeral and, you know, all the party and everything. But Kiari wrote a long post about Obi. You can find it online with the bloggers. Here you get. Obi is a good businessman. Obi is this. He even took Obi's back when people are saying his source of wealth is questionable. Here you know. So we have to go back and look at that part too. Okay. Do top cops go to events of rich people? How many top cops do that? Okay, we're not saying it's wrong. Personally, me, I don't think it's wrong. If I have my birthday and I want to invite Kiari, I like Kiari. I really course, admire his work. Now. Kiari is a man I like Kiari. I admire his work, but what is coming out about him is very, very hard. Now, since Monday night that these FBI guys arrived, what do they want? They want to recover the money that they say Kiari allegedly received from Hush Puppy. They monitored his trip, okay, to Dubai in September of 2019. And remember, the bigger picture is that Hush Puppy has done a plea deal. What is a plea deal? Okay, I'm going to plead guilty. I stole. I did scam. Okay, I'm going to tell everybody who is involved. That's what he's doing now. He's getting his plea deal done. If he does that now, I sure he might end up getting five years. Not even 10 or 15 or the 20 he's facing. Three, he four, might... three, four years, sir. Uh -huh. Because he's, he's calling everybody out now. So you can expect more people. There are politicians in the mix. Now, let's tell you about the EFCC. That young boy at the EFCC, what's his name? I don't even know. The 40 year old boy running the EFCC. He said he can't arrest Kiari. Because it's a police matter. Let me tell you that. Let me elaborate on that. He cannot arrest Kiari because it's a police matter. But if it's a young Nigerian boy, the EFCC will arrest him. Without warrant. For, for the FBI. Without warrant. What's the name of those two guys that own that club in, in, um, in the island? Tanya Omotayo's husband and his partner. They've arrested them because they said they were doing BEC crimes to fund that club, and that the FBI has a warrant for them. Those guys are behind bars. Are they going to be extradited? We have a problem. Nigeria does not have an extradition treaty with the United States. 
That's the bigger picture. We tried and tried and tried to extradite Buruji Kashamu. Kashamu was not extradited. He ended up being the only one in that big drug case that was not even tried. Now, because of that, because of that, um, you know, he stayed as a fugitive forever. However, he's dead now of COVID-19. Obasanjo was the one trying to extradite him. Uh, when he died, you saw what Obasanjo wrote about him. Obasanjo just wrote his own regular bullshit, saying, um, you know, you can't hide forever, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, fast forward. EFCC said they cannot arrest Super Cop Abakiari. It is a police matter. Now, you got to remember that the EFBI has always worked alongside the anti-graft agency, the EFCC. Now, when did the FBI start working with Nigerian police? At no one time. Now, this is a corruption case. If, in fact, he collected money from Oshpopi, but is it corruption or is it money for services? Did Abakiari meet with Hushpapi in Dubai to collect some dollars in exchange for arresting Vincent? Vincent Chibuzo, or what's his name? Vincent is now arrested in the US in that case. Okay, because Kiari arrested him in Nigeria, locked him up, snapped a picture of him in the jail, and sent it to Hushpapi. Oh, yeah, I've arrested him. So, but hold on. Kia, Kia, Mama, mm -hmm. doctor, hold on. So that is where now the problem is from now. So now there's evidence of. You understand? Yeah. So it means there's a conspiration. There's a conspiration. So, in in other words, Abakari is already involved in the experts for him to. Yeah, there's a, there's a there's a con only conspiracy. 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 <laughs> there's a conspiracy theory. There's a conspiracy there. So, because no, 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 slow down. There's no theory. Cut the word theory out. Nigeria, you see, you're an SBNI already, Sam Cliff. Smart, but no intelligent. Conspiracy theory is one sock way. Conspiracy theory is one sock way. Sure, you know. It's conspiracy. No theory near it. Okay, the conspiracy so there's a, because. There's a conspiracy because he has. They've seen evidence for the fact that he took the picture and he sent it to Oshwa Oshwa P. P. I've done this job for you, which is a death yes. job. That is corruption. Yeah. Now that job is not supposed to, that's not a service job. You can't prove that's, it. You can't prove that wait, it's corruption. Wait, 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 wait. I'll, 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 you say I'm not, not intelligent. Let me now prove it. Now you're a policeman. The job of a police is what? To secure lives and properties against mm -hmm. what? Against criminals against robbers, against kidnappers. Now, you're supposed to be protecting the citizens. But instead, now there's what called hierarchy. Now, because you feel you have the power, which is gone, you have numbers and you have whatever it is, which uh, Oshropi already had. Now, Oshropi used that same influence. And based on the fact, there's what called buying people. You already bought his trust. You feel me? So mm -hmm. now, Oshropi now conspired and with him to based on the fact that he had more power over Vincent, that is where the greed comes from. That's why I say they're saying as small shit, they're staying ash. So, okay, but listen, go ahead, go ahead, finish up. Or should so, I let me continue here? Yeah, so, what? So, at that moment, at that point in time, that is not the service of the police. Now, that is a service of now that's kidnapping. That is an intentional, you understand? That is that's a crime. Now, you've committed a crime against what you're supposed to be. Uh, people are supposed to protect him. You've, you've abused your power. You've abused your position. Now, let me go back to that because this is where the lawyers come in. If I was Kiari's lawyer, I would argue that. And let me explain that to you as a journalist that analyzes situations. What I want to say is this. When somebody duped my mom of 75,000 Naira, the person said, the pastor has returned from UK and they need 75K to put him in a hotel in Lagos and then 50K to the hotel, 25K for the transportation back to Ibadan. My mother gave them that money. Sure, you understand me. The person that called was calling from that pastor's church. So then my mother 
send the money to them. Why I did. When the pastor actually arrived, the pastor called my mom and said, I have not boarded the plane in London. Who called you that I need a 50,000 hotel and a 25K? My mom said, but your secretary or your PA, somebody from the, your church. The pastor said, I didn't ask anybody to call. My mom now found out, oh my God, it was a scammer. Now, the person who called, called my mom's phone almost 15 times. And after my mom sent the money, a let came in, the person didn't call my mom anymore. So I now call the police. Nigerian police asked us for money to do an investigation and track the person's GPS to make that arrest. Yeah, we know. I know when, they asked us, when they asked us for the money, American police will not ask you for money. It is their job. They have budgets, police funding and budgets. But Nigerian police has almost zero budget. Their no bosses on top have all the money. No fuel. They don't even have fuel in their car. Don't you well. The officers are getting 25000 with five children at home. They're living in barracks. They have no hope of buying their own house. Nothing. So they charge for investigations here. Now, as soon as I heard that money pass, my mom just said, forget it. I'm a former first lady. I don't want to be in the news. My mom just said, forget it. She wasn't paying that money. But I gave you that example to tell you how investigations are done. When Hush Shopee called Kiari to come to Dubai, okay, they monitored everything and Hush Poppy's driver picks him up. You know, Daddy Freeze's name came up and I spoke to Freeze last night. I said, Freeze, your name came up in the article. The FBI knows of you because you are the one eating dinner with him when that phone call came. The phone call from Alomari wow. saying that money come out to 900 and something thousand. You have to go and watch that video. Freeze has taken that video down. He doesn't want the controversy. But the video might be on Hush Puppy's page. You have to scroll through so many things. The video shows Hush Puppy dining with Daddy Freeze after giving me a tour of the house. Oh, my driver makes 100K a month. My, a phone call came. He picked the phone to his ears and said, oh, Freeze, I'm coming. He entered a room to go and make the phone call. That is the phone call the FBI played to us as reporters. And when we heard it, it's, what's up, bro? Yeah, I'm on the plane. Plane is landed. The signal is poor. Let me get to the terminal. When we get to the terminal, network will be better. I'll send you the screenshot. Okay. The next stage is for Hush Puppy to move the money and launder it. 922000 the money for a law firm client who refinanced real estate. Ah, someone else's money. They tricked that person. Alamari, the hacker, had gotten into the money, and now Oshapi has to move the money through Chase Bank, Wells Fargo, three major banks. I don't know how Chase let him open a bank account in the name of Malik. That's the name he used over there, Malik Abbas. And you know Americans, they will never look at your name. The minute they see Abbas, they say, oh, it's this middle name. Well, Olu Kemi, Olu Lawyer, and Olu Yemi, Olu Lawyer. For years, they thought me and my, my sister were the same. So they have to pay attention on these names. Now, when Kiari arrived in Dubai, the major thing is, what did he go there for? To collect money for an investigation. Is this right or wrong? Technically, it's not wrong. Because police charge for investigation. But could you not wire that? No, no, it is wrong because wait, it's, it's wrong for because it's Nigerian. So I want to say it's wrong. Okay, but yeah. wait, wait. Yeah. We are Nigerian. Don't think bad about ourselves. Wait and listen. You know the people can't comment. They will comment after when we open question and answer session. Sam Clef, when the people when he traveled to Dubai, the question I raised was why couldn't Kiari Gets Hush Puppy to wire the money to him in Nigeria to begin the investigation because the investigation will be a police investigation and it has to go to the police account. But instead, it went to his account. That's where it gets fraudulent. So you are right in a way. But he did not want that money wired over there. He instead flew Kiari to Dubai, which is the same thing with Namdikanu. Namdikanu was offered $10 million to help his, to fund him with his Biafra agitation. His sponsors were going to give him $10 million. Okay, the money they got in those accounts are big money. America has frozen their accounts. America froze the IPOB account. So let me tell you, when they offered them $10 million, the phone call 
that Namdi had. The DSS monitored it. I heard that phone call. What he said, oh, I'm coming down there myself because of the amount of money. $10 million. You don't want anyone to collect that. I'll come and get it myself. That's what they used to bait him and he caught him there. You see what I'm saying? So, Kiari did not want that money wired. If, he wired, if they wired it to him in Nigeria, there would be a paper trail. Che, you know, EFCC will be asked to freeze his account and they will see the alert. Che, you get my point. So, for a money launderer that kept $41 million in cash inside his house, all he had to do was go to the money room and take some cash and give it to Kiari. Che, you understand? That cash was proceeds of Hush Puppy's crime. So Hush Puppy had to tell on Kiari. Do you know how many cameras they may have used to bug them? Kiari carried his money allegedly and flew back to Nigeria, arrested the boy, and then locked him up and snapped and said, it's Hush Puppy, job well done. Now, it was when Vincent Chibuzo was released. According to Kiari, you know Kiari was still laughing on his social pages this morning. I mean, you don't know, yesterday morning. Yesterday, yeah. He was still laughing. He was still laughing, saying, all of you trying to cause my demise. It's a joke. He was not laughing, no, by 6 p.m. All mm -hmm. his pages were off like, no. Mm -hmm. what, remember what he said? When mm -hmm. Chibuzo came out of the prison, you know Chibuzo has been arrested by the FBI in America. Okay. When Chibuzo came out of prison, remember what he said. Kiari said, I investigated him and I found out that Chibuzo did not threaten Hush Puppy's family. Because what he said, what Josh Papi said is that I wanted him to arrest somebody who threatened my family. Sure, you understand? Mm -hmm. Why was Chibuzo arrested? It was over a money deal. Kiari specifically said the reason he arrested him was because he was told that he threatened somebody's family. But when he discovered, no, it was just a money issue, they released him. So now, was, he didn't know why he was arresting the guy. He didn't know. He just said, okay, it was because he threatened Hush Puppy's family. But when he released the guy, he said that he did not threaten anyone. It's just a money issue between both of them. Now, according to Chibuzo, Chibuzo said he paid his way out. Sure, you understand me? Yeah. He said, if you, you are not going to hear that in any news. These are exclusives I'm giving you. Chibuzo said he paid his way out. So did Chibuzo pay Abakiyari to the FBI is saying yes? So now, Chibuzo has been arrested with the others. But guess what? Sam Clef, these boys, they are on bail now. Chibuzo and the girls, they are all on bail. But they seize their passport so they can't travel out. Sure, you understand? Where are they and they are here? In America. For real? What I don't understand is after Kiari arrested Chibuzo in 2019, that one flew back to America. So he might be carrying a U.S. passport. All of them are going to lose, lose their U.S. passports. I'm telling you, they're going to revoke all of them. So he traveled back to America. Then when they linked him to the businessman, the 1.1 million that the businessman lost, okay, they now arrested all of them. Two, Chibuzo and, two, and one other person and two girls. They, have, they arrested them last week now, July 22nd. Okay, this boy, Oshwapi, did a plea deal in April. So now July 22, they are surprising people by arresting them. So why do they want Kiari? Because the proceeds of that crime is with him. Why don't you just say, okay, give me my money back? You see where Nigeria is different from America? Hmm. In Nigeria, when you do some crimes, when you pay it back, that's it. Okay, they won't give you jail time. James Iboris stole money. He paid it back. They gave him nothing. But the British jailed him. This is what they're doing in corruption. You're supposed to lock people up. Now let's go back to the EFCC. The EFCC is daft right now. <clears throat> they are daft right now, smart but not intelligent. Kiari's matter is all over the place, across panels inside Nigeria and outside. If you type Nigeria on Google, the first thing that comes out is Kiari and the athletes. Belsin Okaguri expelled from the Olympics for doping. 10 of our athletes doping. Where are our athletes? All the other athletes said they cannot perform because so they have the brand, the brand of Nigeria is Nigeria is a sinking ship right now. We're, we're using what sinking care? We have sank. We are using drugs now in our our Olympic team. Yeah. We that we won the gold for basketball and soccer in, in Atlanta, 1996. We are now using drugs, doping, doping that has made many people be expelled from the Olympics. We are now doing it. 
How can the president even concentrate? Now, let me tell you something. Mm. The way they need to do this is because these guys are toying around with the final destruction of the MPF. If they try to shield Kiari, if they try to shield Kiari, EFCC said, I can't do his police matter. Police has, you know, PSC, Police Service Commission has announced that we will either suspend, okay, or dismiss Kiari or put him on probation based on the findings. The PSC is going to draw those, you know, Nigerian law system. They will pull that case for three, four years. FBI go tire. You know what I mean? <laughs> FBI go tire. Now, they go see. That's what hmm. I was going to say. The and FBI is not the FBI is not like like Nigeria our DAF PFCT See, Nigeria just step is a big call. What's gonna happen? The least is gonna happen that uh, Abakari is gonna be fugitive, fugitive. That's the least that's gonna happen to him. It's he can't travel out of he can't travel out of Nigeria because yeah, if he so goes to ordinary Ghana, if he goes to ordinary Ghana, they will carry him via extraordinary rendition. They're just gonna be you know, fugitive. The yeah. same way extraordinary rendition now let me tell you about the files okay that's where i need money i keep talking about money i like money abby sam cliff i like money where's that 30k that you say you want to sponsor one person to Mama. do school hmm. you know, sam you cliff know. let me tell you where i'm trying to get into now i'm trying to get into the files and the fbi since monday night Forget that Monday night. They are right. You don't know. They might have started work Monday night, but they have started work Tuesday. Since that Tuesday morning, it's now Saturday. They have not even started declassifying the, the files. They haven't started declassifying his files. They only a little, they opened a little bit of it. Okay? And it's what they communicated with Hush Poppy that they're still looking at. Because Kiari has to sit in front of them and look at what Hush Poppy said and everything. But Kiari cannot be found. The FBI does not do media trial. So anybody on social media, if you like, can say this or that. You can abuse Sam Claire for Kemi or anybody. FBI does not do that. They came in to extradite him because he's holding money that belongs to other people. This was why the news broke on the open part of the investigation findings. Mm -hmm. I said the open part. The closed parts are not declassified yet because there's more in those files. And that's the part where I'm trying to get into. When I say I need money, it's not like I'm going to use my money to go and pay FBI or officer. No, they don't do that. They don't do bribes. Journalists get this information. Time is money. If I go to bed now, no, I don't wake no. up tomorrow. I, let, me, let me even talk on the aspect for your behalf. So just, mama, just, uh, doctor, just chill, chill. Oh, wait. Hold. Hold, on, hold on to this. So now what I found out yesterday that Abakiari is talking from somewhere. I don't know where. Maybe it's village. Maybe underground. But Abakiari has denied ever meeting hush puppy that one is coming from police statement too okay remember when i did the fatal evil case with busola that colo the rape case, so this case remember when I did the rape case? there was some information in that police files that i discovered that that really got the case like almost finished when they went to interrogate busola at headquarters Busala was allowed to change the dates that she allegedly was raped because I discovered here an investigative journalist just discovered that you were never raped because you said they raped you in on a Mercedes car, doggy star. The car was not bought yet. You said you are coming back from babysitting the pastor's child. The baby was not born. As soon as I, I found that and I busted her, they allowed her to change the dates on the police statement mm. because the officer in charge of that case, your guard there was from Bielsa. And Timmy is from Bielsa. So one of the small officers working with our guy is the one that tipped me up. And she came here, don't mention my name or she has changed the dates. You see, that's the same thing happening now. I have gotten into the files in Abuja. And let me just say this before I tell you what I found. When I call Mr. Mba, CP Mba, Frank Mba, the spokesperson, believe it or not, Mr. Amba said, hi, doctor, how are you? It's been a long time. I said, ah, yes, so the pictures that I promised you, don't worry, I will still get it for you because Prince Phillips died. So I found them, you know, let me tell you what it is. Earlier this year, I spoke to Frank Mba. You know, my, um, Sam Clef, you know my grandfather was Nigeria's first deputy, IGP. Did you know? My grandfather, uh, Chief Akinyemi, Chief Samuel Akinwale Akinyemi, my mom's dad, was Nigeria's first deputy IGP. The IGP was an Oibo man. And 
you know, the queen picked my grandfather, the first Nigerian one. And in 1951, he retired and became a member of the Western State House of Assembly. So I'm um, Omo Baba Olokpa. That's what, you know how Davido is Omo Baba Olowo? O-B-O. My own is Omo Baba Olokpa. O-B-O, Auntie Kevin. You know what I'm saying? That's what they call us. That's what they call us. That's what they call my mom. That's what they call my mom. You just a boss. They make me laugh. I hear you, mama. Let me tell you what my grandfather, when my grandfather left the Nigerian police force, basically um, the school, the students at Nigerian police force college, the college students studying how to become police. My grandfather comes out a lot in their schooling, but they don't have pictures. Yeah, you understand, Sam Clef. So I told Frank Mba earlier this year that I have black and white pictures and I even have one of him shaking the queen. They need those pictures for the police museum. Sure you get so I became very good friends with Frank Mba. I have the pictures now. I've sent it to him because I said I'll work on getting them. But when Prince Philip died, you know Prince Philip, the Queen's husband, when he died, my, my brother found the pictures of when my grandfather was shaking the Queen and Prince Philip in 1955 when they came to Nigeria. So I said, ah, I will send those pictures to you, blah, blah, blah. So I said, I'm calling you to talk to you about Mr. Kiari. Oh, I didn't even mention Mr. Kiari. I'm calling you to talk about a case. As I was talking, just that moment, someone called him. I heard somebody in the background talking to him. He, you know when you're talking to someone in the background, Sam Clef? He now said, ah, doctor, please let me call you back. The DIG is calling me. Sure you get. And maybe that's the DIG calling him. The DIG didn't who, who was on the phone with him. And I didn't say anything about Kiari yet, but he never called me back. When I hung up, I said, mm, maybe this guy knows mm, investigative journalist is calling about Kiari. Sure, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He wouldn't be able to call me back now because we just say no comments. He was, he's the spokesman. Because they can't, I, they, can't say, they can't comment on it right now. Ah, not now. So, but I got, I got into the files, okay? Because I, I, I contacted my snitches. About Kiari's statement has been taken already. He denied ever meeting Hush Puppy. But that's, that's, that's a problem because he has also said it was money for, for native. So he's complicating himself. So now a policeman is supposed to... Can you see that? He shot, he shot himself. Exactly. He shot himself in the foot. Now, he denied meeting Hush Puppy. Okay, that's premature because Kiari doesn't know that there's a separate document oh, smart, but on how he traveled to Dubai. There's a, a certain document. Man, but he wasn't intelligent. He's a smart yes, SBNI. He's not SBNI. He SBNI. does not know he's not, he does not know there's a separate document that details how he traveled to Dubai to meet Hush Puppy. Hush Puppy don't Hush Puppy don't give them video. You see what I date my video? Nigerians will be laughing when I say Kemi Olulua, Lagos, Nigeria, 31st of July. Hush Puppy don't give them dated video. And then boarding passes. Emirates airline, business class, everything is documented. Oh, people, if, if you try, hold on. Hold on, mama. let me now share a secret to people now. You see your iPhone, right? Your iPhone, mm -hmm. your iPhone you're holding everywhere you go, uh, everywhere you've been. There's a part, it, there's a part in your iPhone that records where you are. Everything, right now. maybe that's where they find him. So, that's how they what, find him. What people don't understand is that the world now is a digital world. We are all, we are yeah. all, we can, they can link you through your, your trip. And that's, if you bought a pass, if you bought a ticket now that you want to travel right now, it's easier for them to know that it's on the system. It's on the system. The computer is one. In as much you can see, oh, this one ticket, you can still track. If nobody is safe, if they come, if they are ready for you, they will come for you. <laughs> I will go when I go to bed. I will turn off my location and everything. But listen, so he doesn't know that that one is been documented. Yeah. So it's a separate document that details how he traveled and everything. Now, there's a lot developing, Sam, Sam Clev, a lot. And we can't say much about figures now until the entire case and findings are open. The entire case has not been disclassified because. The FBI is still thinking, should we show Nigerian police all this stuff, okay? Or should we just wait and show them more proof? Because the FBI didn't come for the Nigerian police. They came for Kiari and the EFCC. They figure that EFCC will help us, you know, arrest him. And the EFCC is not cooperating. 
Do you think the boy running the EFCC, the 40 year old boy, whose orders are he taking? Is he not taking order from presidency? No, he's taking now, order from. Wait, 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 wait. He's taking order from. Let me tell you what's happened to that boy. Hold on, Mama. Let me explain to you. You see, that boy was pulled there for a reason. So, you see, um, 2024, that's when Nigeria's eyes were open. So, that boy was pulled there because they want to. It's Malami that is controlling that boy. That boy is Malami's puppet. Malami. Hey, Sha, like Malami. I'm so, working in the, from the same states now. Yeah, so he's a he's a full and he's a full and republic. Nigeria is under the full and republic. They've, they've penetrated everywhere. You know, Sam Sambo Clef, I want to make I want to meet Malami. I want to meet with the attorney general and I have connection. No, honestly, I have his number. What do you want to I have his number. Wait, wait, wait. Did I not go to Abuja in May and I called the touchdown yeah. Abuja 2023? My secret mission. Okay. When yeah, I went, yeah, well, I didn't know, Mama, let me tell you something you need to be careful about yeah, before, uh -huh. I mean, before now, because I want to, I want to end the video so I can tell people to, I want to talk about your birthday, I want to talk about you. So before we do that, let me just okay. talk about what you don't understand about this country that you know, you understand? So we have the gatekeepers, the unseen men, the unseen forces. So what is happening right now, right now is towards 2024. So if you notice that um, four years ago, before the election, they started clamping on the Yahoo boys because they realized that the people have more money. So right now, if you realize that they just changed the bird to change right now, and the fact that they said they're not selling to routine. Now, anytime they come out to talk about this law, all this change, these policies, it does not affect the people in the north. Take, for instance, when they said they were closing down all the borders in the states, all the borders in the north were still open. So they know what they are doing. 2024 election is coming. So they 2023. Are 2023, it's 2023, it's 2024, it's after four years old. I, I, call it, I used to call it 2024, that's when people, whatever is going to happen. So what they're doing right now, they are trying to, they are trying to suppress people, subdue. So that boy that was put there was kept there to, to, to intimidate some other forces. You understand? And because he's young, he's agile, he will do everything for his master. He's Malami boy. Okay, he's let me just say this. Let me talk to you about Malami. Personally, me, I, ad I admire Malami, even though Malami is always in the controversy. Malami is always in the controversy with, with regards to all the stuff he's doing. I, I don't like media trials, and I don't like rhetoric. Rhetoric uh, is about when Sahara is now reported about Mal Malami's son had an event, he has his Mercedes. That's rhetoric. They will not say it's Nigerian money, is this. We can't prove any of that. Malami is the attorney general of Nigeria. I need him to help me with some things. There are laws being broken by the minute, and the people there are suffering. No there is no law. Mama, let <clears> me ask a question. Since the day you were, since the day you've been in Nigeria, eh, have there been any justice? Abiola was killed. Kudirat was killed. Uh, Kesariwa, uh, what's it called? Uh, Delegia was killed. Have there, is there any justice? There's no justice system in this country. So what are you saying? So Okay, no let me just tell you. So, so this is I the know. hottest part. This is the hottest part of my life with you. So let's do it. Don't let's lose this life. Oh. Regarding Kiari, a lot of the IGPs, they have always known about Kiari's antics. According to the police officer that snitched to me, the one that told me that he said he doesn't know Hush Puppy. Kiari, they said all the IGPs knows his antics and they kept him at bay, okay? You know Adamu was fired, right? By Oshimbajo. Now, it brings out a lot of can of worms. Adamu shut him down, okay, because there was no political whatever that would get to him to resign or face justice for everything they accused him for. They even accused, they accused Kiari of executing a man, a former SARS officer, Michael Adiku, the mastermind of offer robbery. The guy that shot 33 people, him and his other cohorts. Remember those two mentioned Bukola Saraki's name? Mm -hmm. And after they mentioned Bukola Saraki, Adiku died inside custody. Mm. He had a heart attack. He was sick. Now, all these cops at SARS, okay, he was a former SARS officer. SARS was still around. All these cops are now saying, you know, I was the one that broke the story of, of a robbery. 33 people. And all the TV stations were reporting nine, channels 12, TVC 15. I have 33 because the Mopol officer that got there after they shot up the police station and they went to shoot up the bank, the first Mopol officer to get there is a member of my church in Ibado. And he told me, say, Auntie Kemi, I'm on my way to offer again. After service, so he was living in his uniform and guns and one big convoy of police in Hiloxis. 
because the place right now was dangerous. I didn't know the, if the armed robbers were there. A former SARS officer orchestrated that, and he died in custody. When he died, everybody was saying, ah, if Kuku silenced him, because he mentioned Bukola Saraki's name. At the end of the day, now, documents are saying Kiari ordered his execution. Did you hear me? Mm -hmm. They say Kiari allegedly ordered his execution. Hey, what we're looking at is this FBI case. Other new things are now coming out about Kiari. Allegations that the Nigerian Police Service Commission say they are going to investigate. Okay? Adamu shut him down, but there was no, nobody or no politician that could, that, that could get to him to resign or face justice. Is that why they fired Adamu? Maybe. Who knows? But most of the people that will constitute this panel okay, are probably under his payroll, according to the cop that spoke to me. The senior cop that spoke to me under anonymity said most of these people are on his payroll. Which payroll does Kiari have? Which brings out... How much did he really get from Hush So that's why I said the country is fucked up because normally it's supposed to pay... The people that are supposed to pay the federal government or the police are supposed to be what's it called, pay tax or whatever it is. So, Sam Clef, do you know, do you know D.I.G.? Ogbizi, <clears throat> Mike Ogbizi, do you know him? No. He's retired now. Okay, they silently retired Ogbizi, okay, because his cup was full. Okay, Kiari's cup, they said, was also full and he has run over already. Okay, and nothing will keep him in play. The government hates foreign embarrassments. You know that. What did I say on Arise News? I said, no media has covered this case, no TVC. TVC is owned by somebody who is in the ruling party, all right? Uh, AIT is ruled by another politician in the PDP. NTA, they won't even touch anything like that. The government hates embarrassment. If Lai Mohammed calls NTA and says, no hush puppy story, they have to do that, all right? The government hates foreign embarrassment. Ordinarily, it would be me that NTA will call to come and do that talk, but they didn't. Because somebody, some of the producers had already told me, Auntie Kemi, they won't let us do the story. So I said, I'm already going to Arise. All of you watch it there. You know what I'm saying? And Arise is independent. The government hates embarrassment. And these sanctions that Biden is about to put, if they don't release Kiari to the FBI, it will destroy the police. The country is dependent on grants, mostly from America. The money that we're using in Nigerian police for, most of them are grants we get from America. If the United States pulls out of this of our country, other countries will follow. Don't no, forget, this is not a Kiari alone. It is not a Sato. It is all. Police house will be like, will be like, will be like, will be like a dustbin. If they come out that level, now for all that bridge, all of them will be evil. Let me say this: we won't have any money, and finally the MPF will collapse. Now, Nigerian police consistently ignored criminal petitions against Kiari. Okay, and activists revealed that to Sahara reporters. Listen to this. They say Kiari has been indicted. Okay, indicted at so many, you know, hearings. Indicted for killing wealthy suspects in custody. Mm -hmm. Wealthy suspects in custody. What so makes them wealthy? They've already you know that Amnesty has already said that the indictment, they need to do something about Kiari, but Nigerian police has ignored it for so long. Okay, for example, that businessman that they said he shot, okay, that he was a Yahoo person. Why did Kiari and his boys reportedly empty his bank account? The wife told Amnesty International they emptied his bank account. And Amnesty has been told, Amnesty is telling Nigerian police force that you have to, you know, you have to do something. Okay, they are saying that Michael Adiku was killed because he was in possession of a lot of money that came out of that bank. You hear me? Yeah, he was killed because he was told to, where is the money? Listen to me, oh, 88 million naira of a robbery. They killed everybody in there now. Everybody, that NYSC girl that was sitting on the table, probably trying to order an ATM card. She was sitting on the table in front of a, a customer service with her head like this, blood coming out of her nose, shot to death. That picture I will never forget. Like, they carried money. Everybody was silenced in that bank that day. And now they're saying that Kiari allegedly had him killed because he was in possession of the money, in the, the money he robbed in the bank.
Okay, it's not unusual to kill an armed robber. And SARS had not happened. So they could actually kill you. So you get. And not that's, what they were, that's what I was saying now. Nothing we have, but that's what. Not but don't forget, that's what we were doing. Sam Clef, that's what we were doing. We were killing suspects in custody from armed robberies. But many of the cons, cons, people that were killing were not even armed robbers. They didn't give them court dates. So many have been executed and wasted for nothing. Exactly. Adip was a robber. He killed 33 people and he stole money and they killed him. They just said he died in custody. Some people say it's because he mentioned Bukola's name. Others were saying because he had the money and Kiari wanted the money. At the end of the day, I don't like armed robbers, especially when they're police. The police is the real armed robber, according to some youth that I spoke to yesterday. The police is this, the police, IGP, IRS, STS. Okay, I told you about Kolo. You know, D, uh, Kolo is, uh, is in STS, okay? D, DCP Kolo, he's in STS. STS is Special Tactical Squad. Every one of you Nigerians, you must know what this stands for. IRT, Intelligence Response, STS, Special Tactical Squad, okay? Mama. Mama, wait, Mama, you need to, before we, you know, we just, I don't want us to miss this live. So I'm going to turn on the comment section. So once I do that, I want to tell everybody, view, or to all the viewers, diaspora, Nigeria, um, the reason why we're doing this is because um, everything, the world has changed and journalism has changed. So, so you see this, our doctor, with the so <laughs> with a young like this, our Mama, we say they're very emotional. And of course, of our off comment session, you know, I want us to do something. I bet it's coming up on Friday. Please, there's any way you can support, especially with the diaspora. You understand? Forget about her emotion of how she, let's just support her because whatever she's doing right now, she's playing a good role. She has passion for Nigeria. And I want you, I'm going to turn on the comment section right now. You understand? And um, hold on. Don't forget to save this video. No, no, can we do a comment? I, I want to end it now. So I want end, to end it. Now. Save this video because I'm going to post it on Facebook yeah, I want, and I want Instagram. Because I want to save it now. So let me, Mama, it's my turn now to. to and then we'll come on. back. Mama, let me now. We'll come back now. with the comments. Mama, now, chill. Let me, let, I got you now. I got you. I got you. So it's, let me speak for you now. So um, it's not easy for an adult like her to have this kind of passion and intelligence, you know. She has a beautiful soul, you know, and she has been through a lot. She has been through a lot emotionally, traumatized, you know. It's not easy for you to be raising your kids and stuff like that in a country where there's no law, where it's that the only poor people that suffer. If you're a rich man, you can go against the law. So let's support this young woman. I'm gonna post paste that account number on my page. If you're in diaspora, whatever you have, just let's just keep supporting our, our journalism. She's a journalist. She's a doctor. She's smart. She's very intelligent. She's informed. She knows how to do this thing. So if all if you can all come together and support her, you understand. It doesn't take anything from any of us. You understand? Because at the end of the day, that is what we're here for. We Nigerians, we need to save our own country because the country is already messed up. You understand? So Mrs. Kemi, we love you, and we don't see you. Not I'm not. Mrs. I know you love me, Doctor Kemi. So. Never be married, though. Every, can you see everybody loves you? Everybody loves you because I don't. Be, we, and we've told, we've I bet that now that she's not going to be re, a, re, report, a, a comment. A, what's it called again? She's not going to be. Um, uh, <laughs> she's not going to be. Uh, Mama, what's that English again? You don't say it's a good teaching. She's not going to be replying people again. She's working on her emotion, emotional intelligence because she's a woman. Every man has impulse problem. They react to things. That's why I have to turn off the comment section. So shout out to everybody that came to listen to this. Our, we'll be doing this once, once, once there's a news so that we can inform people in diaspora because the, the, the media house in Nigeria, they are all dead. In fact, every Nigerian is not supposed to be watching Nigeria television. Uh, TVC belongs to Tinumbu. AIT belongs to PDP. They are not giving you guys the full information of what is going on in this life. But if you can get the full information from this page and from our page and from every other page you feel like going to. I want to say everybody, have a beautiful day. And remember... Shine your eyes, yo. Mama, drop your account. Eh? Drop your account number quickly before I, just drop your account. I'm eh, gonna... I so want I to. Okay, let me drop it. But uh, also, are we coming back for question and answer? No, no, we don't need Mama. This one already question and answer because I know we, we don't do it. Yeah, we eh. information. so let's just, just paste your account. I'm still gonna paste your account number on my page. please help me. Oh, I need money to work because exactly. after so day... Mama, we'll support you. Don't worry. We'll support you. you know. I'm going to open go for me later today. Everybody, Mama, that's open, Mama, open cash up, self, if, if possible. Eh, hey, cash up, everything. Uh, I've we'll, pasted we'll, first we'll put, we'll put what you do, you put your cash up, and because that's what they do in America, even on your mm. 
put your bank account. Mm -hmm. Tell them, tell them. Please the tell them. Say, wait, wait. If 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 uh, if churches uh, um, put um, their account number for support for us, so we, why can't we support you? You understand? Yeah. Because yeah. You, you right now you're somebody who's taking your time out to get information. You yeah. So right. you don't lose your accounts as long as you're doing this. Don't worry. Yeah. I need, I need to say one last thing. Um, anybody in America that wants to send me dollars, you can now send me dollars directly to, through SendWave. Please, send it through SendWave. SendWave. There are a lot of that eh? people here that will support you. I see MC Attraction here. MC Thank Attraction. you. I see a lot of, I see Tilapia. I see a lot I of people there. there. I so my I, think DM. I think what we're going to do right now, I think I need uh -huh. to focus on the diaspora right now. So yeah, diaspora people, people, please you send wave up. I have a domiciliary account now. They said the government said we can now withdraw two thousand dollars. Your account to. number, mama, before I can go off, because I, this video is gonna go. On. Just put your account number now, so I just pick yeah, it up. I put it. That's the first bank one. There's a second I one. I don't have. I can't see I'll it. After. It's I right. Can't. You see, kill the video. You put it after we finish. I will send you the details. Okay, just kill no the problem. video. You can't lose so this guys, video. Good morning, Nigeria. Good morning, America. It's your boy Sam Clef Noni. We love you all. We just thank you. Passion for our country, and we've seen light. And we don't want you people to we want you people to open your third eye. Sam Clef, what I did with you now is exclusive. Oh, oh yeah, save it now so that I can post it on my on my platforms. Okay, bye. I'm mom. tired. Take care. Bye bye. I'll send you the account. Okay.